Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all doing really, really well. So today I thought I would do a little video in celebration of Pride Month, which is in June. And so I'm going to talk to you about some of my absolute favourite LGBTQ plus books that I have read. I've narrowed it down to, I think, six. And these are just books from like across genres, kind of across different aspects of the queer experience but they're books that I absolutely love whether that's like a really big part of it whether that's just something that's threaded through these are just books that I would highly highly recommend to everyone but they're definitely books that deal with those things and you know often celebrate it there are a couple of I guess sadder books in here which I think is a valid part of that experience but I've tried on the whole to keep these books quite positive and yeah to be like a celebration but they're all just amazing books anyway some of them you might have heard of some of them hopefully not and I can recommend them to you but yeah that is what we're doing today so let's get straight into it first book that I want to talk about I don't actually own a copy of I listened to this on audio a few years ago now I picked it like pretty randomly I actually didn't know going into it that this was going to be a book about the LGBTQ plus experience because I think that's not at least at the time that wasn't really put on the blurb but it just ended up being such a great read and that is In at the Deep End by Kate Davies. So I thought this was just going to be like quite a fun you know like easygoing almost like a bit of a rom-com. Um, it's about a woman who has been in a relationship for a really long time. They break up and she's kind of reassessing her like what she wants and um her kind of sexual it begins with thinking about like her own sexual drive and so she's going on like these dates with men but then she begins to realize that maybe some of the issues she's had in past relationships is because she actually is a lesbian or is attracted to women and so that's kind of then what the book ends up becoming about it's about her exploring that new part of herself and it's just such a brilliant book i think in terms of exploring that kind of experience of discovering your identity and discovering your sexuality and I really like and found interesting that it was slightly later in life like I believe our main characters maybe in her late 20s but it's definitely not something that you know she's always known and it's something that when she has these realizations when she already thinks like she knows who she is as a person kind of throws up some difficulties for her and so it definitely deals with that kind of like coming out experience but in, in a really really positive way and like I say it's not that everyone has that positive experience but and the book actually does get quite dark at times as she gets into these new relationships with women and potentially in some bad relationships but I just thought it was such a like honest and quite a like raw but still very like readable and still very funny look at it she like i say she gets really into like internet dating and then she does end up in a relationship with a woman and it's that kind of first real relationship that she's had that isn't with a man and we see through the course of that relationship her getting so much like joy and fulfillment out of it but then also that might not actually be a perfect relationship and so i think it's a really it's really nuanced. It touches on kind of as a trigger warning like domestic abuse in relationships which also I think is something really interesting to look at in terms of a queer relationship because so often the way we think about domestic abuse is very much like a man and a woman. It can get quite deep and like rough at times seeing that relationship but then we do see our main character kind of come through that and it ends up being such a like positive book like I say about it has like a happy ending you know it is a it's an upbeat happy book it's super funny there's loads of like really like funny dating stories and it's I listened to it on audio and it had that kind of thing where you just feel like you're listening to a friend like tell a story which I really liked and so I think it does such a good job of looking at these like big things but then also being a really real book about like what it's like to go through that kind of period of self-discovery so I absolutely love this book I don't hear too many people talking about it and I would highly highly recommend it because I'd say it's like deceptively simple and funny and fun but actually what it's doing and what it's looking at in terms of like lesbian identity and, and lesbian relationships I think is so smart and great so I'd highly recommend In at the Deep End by Kate Davies if you haven't read it already. Okay next up I have a book that you probably heard me talk about quite a lot but I couldn't not talk about my absolute favourite bi icon who is Roxanne Weary. So this is the first book in the Roxanne Weary private investigator series by Kristen Lepionka. It's called The Last Place You Look and I am obsessed with these books. There's four in the series. I've read them all. I'm highly anticipating the next one and this is a brilliant series for so many reasons but like the main thing about it is I just love Roxanne. So Roxanne is the main character in this series. She's a private investigator and she's just such an update, like a fresh update on the private investigator. I really like that Kristen Lepionka has these kind of 
nods to that kind of quite dated like noir idea of what a detective is so like Roxanne does have a slight problem with alcohol and she is a bit of a maverick and she does kind of not really cooperate with the police but then she's also like a young woman she is as I say she's bisexual she has relationships with both men and women throughout this series in particular like one woman who she had a very serious relationship with and then a man that maybe she could have a relationship with and I just love I love these books for so many reasons. They're so like cozy, I feel like, because you get to know these characters so well, like Roxanne and her family and her friends and the people that she meets along the way. And Roxanne's just a really, she's just a crease for want of a better word. She's so fun. She's such a real character. And you know, she is kind of as much as she has this hard shell, like a bit of a hopeless romantic at heart. She really loves this woman who she's been, was in a relationship with for years, despite everyone telling her like, this woman is not nice to you. And then she has her walls up, but you just really root for her. And I just really like that her bisexuality is like a big part of these books, but very seamlessly and normally done. And it's just like, yeah, she is interested in men and women, but also like these books, I really just think they're super well written in terms of being like a thriller or a crime book. This one is my favorite, the first one. It is such a good mystery. I read this book all in one night because I started it and I read it for like a challenge video kind of thing didn't know anything about it and then I was like oh wait this is really really good and in this one basically so in this book there is a black man on death row for killing his girlfriend and her family but the girlfriend who he apparently killed they never actually found her and then his sister comes to Roxanne because she's like I've seen that woman like I think she's still alive if we can find her we can get Brad the boyfriend out of prison and so we follow Roxanne as she tries to understand like what happened all those years ago is it possible that this girl is still around this woman and it was such a satisfying mystery because I picked up on a couple of clues like throughout it where I was like oh maybe that means something and then totally forgot about it because there was so much else going on and then when I realized what the outcome was and who the person was I was like that makes so much sense as she's such a clever writer and Roxanne is just such a badass and I love her. Okay, so then next up, kind of no surprises again if you know me, one of my favourite writers ever. I want to talk about The Death of Vivek OG by Akweke Amezi. I'm a huge, huge Akweke Amezi fan. I really could have picked any of their books to talk about in this video because all of their books kind of deal with often the trans non-binary experience or they often have queer characters in them, but I chose The Death of Vivek OG because this is a very sad book. It is a book that whilst I would say has a lot of like love in it and it really celebrates queer relationships in this book and queer identity, it is a book that also deals with like the very real difficulties that you would face, particularly this book is set in Nigeria. We follow a man called Vivek Oji and we know from the start of the book that they end up dead uh, and their parents find their body on the doorstep and then we kind of move like back in time to just find out about their childhood whilst also dealing like in the present with the grief, particularly that the mother feels because she's lost her child. And Amezi is just such an incredible, incredible writer. They, I think, deal with things with such care and their characters feel so real. And Vivek is a fascinating character. So they end up in a relationship with a man throughout their kind of childhood and as they get older, there's always this kind of relationship that is quite taboo for various reasons, but they yeah, have a very intense loving relationship with this man and that causes problems in itself in Nigeria. But then also as you read on the book, you discover that Vivek has in their life explored their identity more. And actually, although they were born as a boy, that might not be the right fit for them. And it's just, it's really heartbreaking to read because you're so invested in the character. You love Vivek and you want them to be happy and you see how they struggle and how that's complicated by this relationship that they have. And obviously, you know, we, as we know, it ends in, in their death. The rate of like assault and unfortunately murder in the trans community is so high and this book really tackles that head on. And so it is, like I say, it's a lot, but also we do have these moments, even though we know Vivek's gonna die, of the true joy they feel when they are able to kind of express themselves Fully and we see these small moments of the people who do support them and who do kind of allow them in quite a 
conservative social environment to explore that and to be the person that they want to be and there's always a lot of spirituality in Amezi's books and thinking about like who the self really is like Amezi's an author who just very much breaks down ideas around the gender binary which I absolutely love and yeah Vivek's just a character that I won't ever forget I don't think and there's so much love in this book although there's so much sadness you experience through the other characters grief how much they cared about Vivek and how much actually they were loved. And so yeah, I absolutely cried my eyes out. It is a heartbreaking book, but it's also beautiful. I couldn't not talk about Anamezi and I haven't talked about Vivek Oji in a while. So yeah, I absolutely love, love, love this book. Another book that is slightly a bit more sad, a bit more complicated, I would say, in terms of what it explores, but an absolute favorite of mine is Cassandra at the Wedding by Dorothy Baker. So this is a kind of, in hindsight, I think it's seen as like a queer classic. So this book was published in 1964. And so it is different in the ways it explores what is a lesbian character in this book. Things were a lot more conservative in the 1960s. Um, you know, publishing was different, but this book is still, despite it being slightly more, I would say, subtle um, and slightly more subtext in this book, it is explicitly about a lesbian character and Cassandra is just such a brilliant and fascinating character. I love this book for a lot of reasons. It's a book about twins. It's basically Cassandra and her twin Judith have a very close relationship. I love reading about twins and Judith's getting married and Cassandra has to travel back to their family home for the wedding and she doesn't want to because she really really doesn't want Judith to get married and so the book takes place over a couple of days leading up to the wedding and we see kind of Cassandra struggling with one the loss of her sister what she perceives as the loss of her sister to this man and how much actually she is struggling for various reasons we learn that she's been living quite like an isolated existence back in her university town and she's maybe struggling with some substance abuse issues and she's just not in a good place and she's really snarky and she's really unlikable but then also we see kind of as the book goes on how the things she's struggling with and not able to like talk to her family about like is this really about Jude getting married it kind of is but is it also about like her struggling with her sexual identity and with this relationship or relationships with women that she can't really be open about and this book is just so so well written like I love the way Dorothy Baker writes this like I say it's so snarky it feels so like a book you would read now like I always say it really reminds me of Matessa, Atessa Moshveg it has that kind of dark humor and also like it is a kind of happy ending book as much as it's about very complex characters and it has moments of you just see Cassandra in kind of like abject sorrow and like at a point where she doesn't know how to go on and this relationship between her and Jude is so kind of taut and tested um but I loved the ending I loved that this book could be all that and still be like for both Judith and Cassandra kind of a slight just like a moment of things are going to be okay at the end we get to see Cassandra at the end thinking about her future and that like the possibilities that are out there and yeah I just love that this book was published and still is such a classic and I recommend it all the time but honestly it's so so good you've got to read it okay next up is a non-fiction book that I read recently again I listened to it on audio so I don't have it and that is Ace by Angela Chen so this is a book that explores asexuality and a romanticism and yeah basically all the sexualities on the ace spectrum which does make up part of the LGBTQ plus community but then also a lot of the because it's a non-fiction book it's kind of like a case study almost um Angela Chen speaks to a lot of different people who identify on that a spectrum and also she looks at like the history of asexuality it always it kind of inevitably intersects across these people but across like the history with other LGBTQ plus identities which I thought was really really interesting that was kind of my favorite thing about this book like I picked it up because I don't know a lot about asexuality it's just not really something I've read a lot of I wanted to like find out more and this book is really interesting on that like I say these kind of case studies these people that she interviews Angela herself is on the a spectrum but she speaks to people like across that spectrum and it has this feeling of being a really well-rounded book and like I say these people might also identify in other ways and this book is just so good at the intersectionalities particularly some of my favorite bits of it were the kind of looking at the history of asexuality and the ways that it's always been in a kind of difficult space like rubbing up against the wider queer community like whether it fits into that rubbing up against like feminism because we went from a space of women don't really want sex to then no women should be really sex positive so then if you're ace nowadays it's like think this idea that you're a bad feminist if you don't talk about how much you want sex whereas 
you might not want to because you might be asexual the way it rubs up against disability because similarly like this idea of disabled people as completely non-sexual beings is a huge problem in the disabled community but then and often it was this idea that, well, if you're ace, there's something like wrong with you physically. But then if you're, the, Angela interviews a disabled ace person and it's like, it's really difficult because they say the disability community are like, don't, we don't want people to think that we're all asexual and the asexual community are like, we don't want people to think we're all disabled. So I just thought it was a really, really fascinating read. It's not a particularly long audio book and I really loved it on audio, really well researched and yeah, a good mix of like the personal and the kind of political and the, the social issues. So I'd really, really recommend recommend that if it's a book that you haven't heard of definitely pick it up it was super super interesting really well done and then finally ending on a really positive note and an absolute favorite book of all time for me is less by andrew sean greer this oh, i just love this book so much there's actually a sequel coming out i think this year that i'm like really scared about reading because i feel like this book is perfect in itself and as much as i want to go back to the characters in here i'm also scared too so less is about arthur less who's approaching 50 he is kind of like a, he's not a failed author, he's very much like a mid-list kind of author who's made his career that way, but he's never achieved like huge success and that's something that as he's approaching 50 is kind of stressing him out and weighing very heavily on his mind. He also recently broke up with his boyfriend and so when he gets a invitation to Freddie's wedding to someone else, he's like, okay, well I can't go to the wedding, obviously. He's like, I can't say like, no, I'm not coming to the wedding because I don't want Freddie to think... I still am in love with him even though I definitely am so he decides he's going to accept every kind of work invitation that he's had and ends up on this like world tour to just try and escape what's happening to try and get away from the wedding but then we realize to kind of escape everything in his life and he is at a real point of he doesn't like his life and he's he's not doing great um and throughout the book as he travels as he meets these people as he has kind of different relationships he kind of finds himself again and that's why I love this book it's so funny like the writing's really funny especially about like the literary world which i really really like it's quite like scathing about it and i found it really funny it's also just such a lovely journey that you see this character go on you see them kind of delve into the things in their past that they haven't dealt with so a previous relationship that arthur had which was like the big first kind of big relationship that he had with a man and when he discovered himself and um, that was with a much older man and that man is now kind of dying and that's brought a lot of stuff up for arthur and just this idea that he has of himself, like the way he sees himself, we come to realize is like so wrong and that's actually not how the world sees him. And it's just so heartwarming, I would say. Um, and I love all like the travel and the places he goes. And it's a real character study of Arthur, but also it is a love story completely. And the ending of this book is such a beautiful, it's like my favorite, like happy ending love story maybe ever. I like cried. I loved how clever it is when you get to the end and you realize that like the whole book is leading up to this, to this like one thing that yeah is all about love and all about Arthur's happy ending and I loved it. I love this book so so much. I also think it's really interesting in terms of like aging both as I say with Arthur's ex but with Arthur himself approaching 15 thinking about like his identity as a gay man when he isn't like young anymore and he isn't kind of like the young attractive man who's going to go out with all these older more sophisticated men um, and maybe he's the older one in the relationship I love it one of my favorite books ever so good okay well they are the six books that I chose to talk about today I tried to get like a good mix of things going on in there but obviously like there's so many more books that I absolutely love please do put your favorite LGBTQ plus recommendations in the comments for pride I would love to see them let's have a chat in the comments obviously I would love for you to subscribe to my Instagram my storygraph will be linked down below as always and I'll see you in my next one Bye.